Uh, so thanks everyone for coming out today. I really appreciate that. Uh, so I'm Andrew Wilson. I'm the founder of Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. It's actually my 10th year. I started this thing 10 years ago. We became an official charity uh, four years ago. Uh, and so we've been on quite a roll. Um, uh, 2019 was a pretty great year for us. When I think of why it was a good year, I was thinking of this on my way over today. Uh, I think of it in terms of how our students are doing. So if I think of the year in terms of student blocks and what we've done and what we've accomplished with our students, it's been, a, it's been actually, by far, it's been the best year to date. Um, even though 2019, I think we kind of minimized our Canadian operations a lot, we kind of got it a little bit sharper, a little bit more together, smaller teams, things like that. Um, the actual output of what's been happening on the ground in Nicaragua has been probably twice as much as any other year in really great ways. It started off with Mikey and I, uh, our nurse, going to Nicaragua in February in 2019. And we there, we met up with all the students one of the nights and we got to meet with them and have, just have dinner and hang out. And those relationships are really important for our students and for us. Um, but it was just a few weeks ago I heard, uh, so Brian, our first medical student who just graduated this year, he like bumped into Kimberly in the hospital and she was doing her pediatrics rotation and they just like hung out for an afternoon and just like talked and got to kind of connect again and, and that kind of thing. And it's those types of relationships of just like circumstantial bumping into each other and hanging out that, to me that was a really positive sign that we're doing a good job at just creating an environment that is really safe and connecting for our students and nurturing for their growth. Um, that was really cool. I really appreciate that. Um, but our actual student achievements in Nicaragua this year, Brian graduated and he finished all of his research. So now he's Dr. Brian. He finished his, he's finished his, his uh, end of the year research. He's finished all of his rotations and he's finished all of his exams and stuff. So 2020 is going to be the first year we have a sponsored uh, doctor for Doctors for Doctors working on the ground in Nicaragua, and we have an executive director uh, who you'll hear from uh, in, a, in another video who um, will be helping uh, manage what that will look like. So how is Brian going to get back to his community? What are the outputs of that? Uh, we will be um, developing and measuring this year for the first time ever. Um, so that's really exciting, and I think that's going to set a precedent for our students in the future as well. So that's Brian. Um, Kimberly, she has now finished all of her exams, so she basically has done all of her schooling. She, her last rotation was her favorite, uh, and she is now going, she really has her heart set on becoming a pediatrician. Um, when we first started, when we first met her and interviewed her, she had her life saved by a uh, open heart surgery when she was a child, so she really wanted to be a, uh, like a, a pediatric surgeon. And then since doing her surgical rotation and almost, I think she said she passed out from seeing blood, uh, she really didn't like it, so she never wants to do that again. Uh, so she wants to stick with pediatrics, which I think is an absolutely wonderful uh, career path for her. Such, bright, uh, such a bright woman. So, um, so she finished all of her exams. She's kind of on her way now. She's doing her clinical internship for the next two years. Uh, the government is actually going to pay her a stipend as well, so she's starting to get paid from the government to do her work in the hospitals. Um, it's still not very much, so we're going to supplement her transportation and her food, so we are still collecting donations and, and working with her to, to do that. And then um, she's continuing doing these things called Days, uh, Days for Girls campaigns, where her and usually another medical student, either Brandon or Someone from, someone from her community. They'll go out to different rural communities and they'll educate young women on uh, sexual reproductive health, uh, menstruation health, um, child prevention, things like that, which is really important because in Nicaragua and a lot of these smaller towns, the average age of first conception is within like mid to late teens. Like it's like a 15, 16, 17, 18 kind of zone where most women are giving birth to their first child. Um, which is a really, really big deal. So this education is really uh, powerful in those communities. And this is a project that she has uh, really headed and kind of created in her, in her landscape. So we're supporting her in that with all the effort that we possibly can. And on top of that, she's just going to be going to school and, and uh, 
finishing her late clinical years. That's her kind of plan for the next two years. And then Brandon, uh, he had probably one of the coolest stories of the year, I think. He, um, in his community, he had two weeks off in the summer, and he chose to go to his community and uh, look at the, the water uh, to make sure that there were no germs in the water. So a few years back, Nicaragua had a whole bunch of flooding and storms, and it a lot of um, contaminated water got into the wells of these communities. And uh, they haven't actually done that analysis on the water to see if it was safe yet, or if it needed any type of more treatment, or you know, if there's parasites in it, or bacteria, or whatever. Um, but people have still been drinking from these wells. So he went back in the summer with, uh, for, for a research project uh, for his two weeks off, and he looked in wells of his community and the community right next door, and actually looked at you know, all the different water supplies under the microscope, and, and did all the testing and staining and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's a picture of him that's pretty good of him like looking in a microscope with the things. And he sent that to us, and that was really cool. Um, when I was talking to the comms director about it, I was really excited because I was like, oh, this is really cool. He's doing public health stuff. He's, he's helping his community. This is really great. Like, this is a really good story. We should write it up. And then she said to me, like, oh, that's not actually the story here at all. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? And she said, the story here is that you have a medical student who you wanted to sponsor so that he could give health care to his rural community. He chose to give health care to his rural community in his two weeks off. Like, that's the story. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. So to me, that was a really big deal. Um, so that's Brandon. Uh, we also, just if you're following up from last year, we did have a dental student that was our, our Doctors for Doctors first dental student that we supported. He has found a permanent donor, and so they actually kind of broke it off and, and are doing their own thing. He also has plans for going to school in other countries, so it kind of made more sense because he has a, a full-time permanent donor who he's working with just on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So he's not within the Doctors for Doctors purview anymore. We did get to support him for a short period of time. Um, you'll see him in some photos and things like that. Really nice guy. We do keep in touch, um, but he's off kind of doing his own thing. So uh, that's Victor, if you're following up from last year. Uh, and then this year, uh, is our biggest thing that you'll see is that we're supporting a nurse for the first time. Um, so we're going to continue to fundraise 10K for, to keep our two students in. So Brandon and Kimberly, they have years of school left that we have to, to fundraise for. That's a huge, that's probably our most important objective. Uh, after that, we're going to continue fostering um, Brian's development to become a medical doctor who's employed and loves his job and still gets to go and give back to his community, and we're following up with that. And then supporting Brandon and Kimberly, our two medical students, and making sure that they're doing their Days for Girls campaign, they're doing this medical research. And then lastly, you'll hear from Mikey, we're going to sponsor our first nurse this year. So that's 2020. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. I know I asked you, <clears throat> I think last year, and we were kind of starting to talk about mentorship and just talking about that nice connection that you mentioned between Brandon and Kimberly. Yeah. Um, what does that look like in terms of, is that a vision uh, DFD and NFN has and like getting those students or wants a doctor to work with each other yeah. in a mentorship type of uh, <coughs> connection or relationship? Yes, that's a great question. So, um, really good question was, basically I'm going to put it into different words as well, but it's, what does the alumni network of DFD and NFN look like? So how does, how does supporting the relationships between our students and our doctors uh, and, and other people, like what does that look like? And is that, the, yeah, the, absolutely. Just, I'm just trying to read yeah. to it. So, um, it's, right now we're still in the very base of it, because we only, we joke that we have an alumni network of one. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, Brian is, is our alumni network. What it looks like right now is more just social, so like really low-key, low-stress environments where we just kind of hang out and eat food once a year is kind of that. It's also, it, it comes down to things like, so Mikey is going to do student selections for her nurses. We want to get one or two of our students in on it, um, be just to like facilitate that process and facilitate their growth in kind of other ways with our, with our project, because they do want to help out in all these other ways. Um, Kimberly, last year, when I was interviewing a whole bunch of candidates for two days when, when we went down to Nicaragua. That was actually why I went down. She came and helped me give the interviews. And actually, I can say we wouldn't have made the selection that we would have made if it wasn't for her input, because she really liked one of the candidates. And that really helped me make a choice. Um, so 
we're fostering relationships and connections right now just with each other and kind of with us. Uh, what that looks like later is more, is going to be connecting them more with as doctors and public health professionals. Right now with Kimberly as well, she's really, she really likes research. Not all of our students will like research, so this is kind of a one-off one case scenario. But Kimberly really likes doing research with her, with her medical care, and we've already started to align her with medical researchers in, uh, in her university that are higher up that she had kind of met in the past but she didn't have access to, and certainly not direct mentorship from, and we're creating that opportunity with her through Ahmed and through research. So that's just an example, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of comes out of the interests of our students organically. Um, but the, the baseline of what that alumni network looks like is getting together and just connecting and coordinating. And they have access to each other's information, so yes. they can contact each other. They yeah, they're all, they're all like friends, that's which is they pretty much like that. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a really cool idea to connect like the student with alumni from their school, perhaps as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. That's yeah. So when it's they're more all specific to yes. their area, right? And when they're all doctors, they're going to help mentor the students that we sponsor next mm -hmm. time. Cool. And it's just going to keep, keep going. Thanks. Actually, uh, this is important before her video starts. So mm -hmm. I asked Denise to record four things for us because we've put a lot of energy into collecting monthly donations from everyone for, uh, for her, and a lot of you in this room have probably given to that as well. Um, I asked her to do a bio, I asked her to do a kind of state of the union on like Nicaragua, like what's going on, can you tell us all about it? And I asked her to do an update of what she's done so far in 2019 and um, what she's going to do in 2020. Hi everyone. Buenos dias, good morning or afternoon. Greetings from warm and windy Nicaragua. My name is Denise Van Wissen and I'd like to introduce myself and tell you about my work with Doctors for Doctors. I'm a Canadian health professional. I studied nutrition at the University of Guelph and I'm driven by a desire to help people. Up until about a year ago, I actually hadn't heard of DFD but that's probably because I'm from Canada. Great strides in health and education took place back in the 80s, and the country has developed a lot over the three decades I've been here. But still, both health and education are sadly lacking. There are a lot of smart young people who want to help their neighbors by becoming doctors and nurses, but their families just don't have the wherewithal to support their studies. Now, I know that the situation here in Nicaragua has dropped out of the mainstream news, but things aren't good. It's unprecedented. I've seen a lot of conflict over the years, but never anything like this. I'm afraid I can't comment further. Just ask Eric, who was of ears. Suffice to say, Nicaraguans need more help than ever. Last year, when I heard that Doctors for Doctors was looking for a Nicaragua director, I jumped at the chance to make a difference with both Canadians and Nicara Nicaraguans. I was interviewed not only by Andrew, but also by one of the Nicaraguan med students, Kimberly. And that was a clear sign to me that this organization wasn't just another foreigners who think they know best type of outfit. After being hired as Nicaragua Executive Director in March, here's what I did in 2019. My first assignment was to report on DFD's work to date, as I saw it. I think it's very much to Doctors for Doctors' credit that they were open to an evaluation from the receiving end of their efforts here in country. Next, it was time to get to know DFD's first scholarship student, Brian Carrillo. Inspiring. He has persevered against the odds for seven years, going to school a good six hours away from his home village. DFD's support has been a key factor in his academic success. After the Canadian summer, I was really happy to hear that we would be able to support a nurse, nursing student for the first time. Unlike medicine, nursing has long been an under-recognized occupation of little prestige, but Nicaraguan programs have been working to make it more professional and, and specialized. I researched all of the nursing schools and recommended that the public university, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Nicaragua, or UNAN for short, would be the best fit. 
Over the last few months of 2019, I managed to make good progress in establishing relationships with the Yunnan School of Nursing Management, and we laid the foundations for formalizing our partnership. Looking ahead now to 2020, I'm excited about getting to know the other students, Kimberly and Brandon, and I'll be helping Brian find work. That D of D's very first student graduates is a major milestone to be savored and celebrated. I'll continue to coordinate with the UNAN directors ahead of selecting our female scholarship student later this year and look forward to helping the young woman integrate into her program. It's been a challenging but rewarding first year for me with Doctors for Doctors. It's exceptionally fulfilling to contribute to good, solid development, especially in these troubled times here in Nicaragua. Thanks for listening right now and for your support of Doctors for Doctors. Mike Carlson, um, the Director of Operations of um, Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. I've been with the organization now for seven years, which is kind of crazy, and Andrew and I were thinking about that. Um, that time flies. So it's my job to sort of handle any of the, the accounting stuff, the legal stuff, to keep the organization afloat. Um, and I've predominantly been doing, or in charge of the, the fundraising piece, um, but kind of drifted away and gotten distracted. So this, this coming year is very much getting back to fundraising and getting back to raising as much money as we can, ensuring that we're out there cold calling um, and uh, creating opportunities for people to give cash. Um, over the last couple of years, we've kind of just been, uh, we haven't been building additional momentum. We've actually been kind of riding on the fumes that, uh, and the momentum that's been created in previous years. So that's really the focus coming up. So uh, it's always my job to kind of keep us as transparent as possible. So for any donors, volunteers, anybody, just so they know exactly what's going on um, in terms of our cash flow, where money is going. This is obviously all on uh, Canada Revenue Agency because we're a registered charity. Um, so you can search that online or any other charity. Um, but this is kind of the, we, we just, I compiled this, I finished the last details this morning um, on our budget, uh, or sorry, on our uh, spreadsheets for where we spent money and revenues. So I just wanted to go through that for folks here. Um, so in general, sources of income, our major source of income um, is still Canada Helps, and that's been a huge part in the monthly donors. Uh, the monthly donors are like, our core support that is continuing to bring cash in. Um, there are additional uh, general donations. Uh, these are individuals who like cut a check uh, or give us 100 bucks cash at various times. We treat those separately because we have to receive them separately. Um, and they're just a different kind of donor. The um, Canada Helps folks are giving on the regular and the transfers are either tend to be at the end of the year, tend to be like, we have some extra cash, we're gonna give you that money. Um, so again, $5,000-ish uh, with Canada Helps, about $1,500 with the like one-off donations at the end of the year. Um, we actually didn't run our November fundraiser. That's for a bunch of different reasons. Um, it normally brings in between $1,000 and $2,000. Um, and our events team and the coordination and the timing and the venue didn't really line up. Uh, so we weren't able to do that. So that was an unfortunate miss this year. Um, we do have a relationship with the uh, Bowman Club Rotary Club. Uh, and they're giving 2500 to support Brandon's education uh, specifically every year. That was an agreement that we made a couple years back, and they're living up to it. Uh, and I think we get one to two more years of this um, funding from them, which is great. Uh, and it's going to help secure Brandon. Um, this thing that's happening now as well, we've grown to a size where we are getting random donations uh, in larger sums. Um, we got a transfer from the United Way, whether or not that person was trying to give to Doctors Without Borders and then accidentally clicked on us, we'll take it. Um, but people gave to the United Way and uh, you can do this thing where they'll forward on money through another uh, charity. So that was a surprise $1,000 uh, and then in-kind donations. Basically what we do is, um, in my place, we store things and host meetings um, constantly and have uh, sort of 
whatever supplies are needed running out of there. This is an in-kind donation. Thank you. So this actually isn't a transfer of cash. Um, it's just like, it's, it's on paper, it's that. So technically we're paying like $337 a month in rent, but that's donated back. That's what's called an in-kind donation. So we have to include it on paper uh, because it is receipted, um, but it's an additional tax receipt um, basically, to me, for hosting and carrying all of our stuff um, and just having it in the place. Um, so it's a, just an accounting practice. So in total, we um, made about $14,000. And then in terms of expenses uh, in 2019, um, Denise, uh, the executive director that you just saw, um, who's being funded, uh, we kind of made the agreement internally that monthly donors would be paying for of Denise's salary. Basically, she works an hour. She's been paid at like this extremely low rate um, for what her time is worth, but also because she's in Nicaragua, it makes sense based on the local salary sort of thing. So we've negotiated it, and we will be raising it in the future. But we spent um, 850 bucks uh, on Denise and the work that she's doing to support students. And then each one of the students um, had a different fee. Um, in total, on student payments last year, uh, about 13500 So that included the four students. So again, Victor, we only supported for half the year because he was able to connect with another um, donor. He also went to the most expensive, or uh, one of the most expensive schools. So half his tuition was the same as the full year uh, or more with the others. Uh, in terms of, uh, these are just some bank fees and uh, the fees that we pay to Canada Helps to collect money. Um, we also have uh, Canadian operations like uh, basics for printing or supplies that we would need uh, in the AGM. Uh, so the AGM and the associated meetings last year were about $875. Um, and then the Canadian operations uh, is about $150. So overall, uh, our expenses, including everything, is about 19,000, 20,000. Um, so we are about 6,000 short. Um, however, we did have cash in the bank. Um, and that's where this comes in. So going into last year, we had about 15,000 plus. Um, so now we're down to about um, 10,000 um, assets in cash. Well, between 10 and 15. Uh, and so we do have some US cash uh, and also cash assets. Now, one of the most exciting things is this is the first time I've really done this and see the math be clear, was uh, we have commitments to Brandon. That's about two more years at 11,000. Uh, and then uh, one more year with Kimberly at about 2,500. And when you really look at that, um, our assets um, actually outweigh our liabilities. So we are in the clear... Uh, which is a really nice feeling. So we have more cash in the bank and we have committed to going to student programming. Um, now this was earmarked uh, and will be used for other initiatives and other student supports. Um, and so we're still gonna try to fundraise that direct tuition. But now it's about, um, we do have some surplus to support student projects or an alumni network as they're starting to develop. So that's actually really, really exciting. And our cash flow for the year, um, we uh, overspent by 6000 but that's, uh, in accounting terms, that's fine because that was part of the deal. We had that in the bank. So that's a walkthrough of the things that we're spending money on. Um, again, no people in Canada are paid. The only major operational expense in Canada is uh, basically the AGM and meetings um, for that to make sure that volunteers have a space to come and connect um, and accountability me mechanisms like this. Otherwise, it's all going um, over to Nicaragua. Um, so just as a visual, because um, I appreciate these, um, this is our student chunk down here. Um, so the darker colors, uh, or the reds, are what we spent. The greens or the blues are what we pulled in. So again, if it was split halfway down the middle, then we would be um, exactly bang on, pulling in as much cash as we're spending. But of course, we spent a little bit more um, on students than and our programs then we took it. But we actually did pretty well. Um, these two cancel each other out because that's the in-kind donation. Um, and yeah, this is Canada Helps. 
and then these are other grants and funding sources. So, uh, and then our ED in Nicaragua is just this small slice. Uh, so we are predominantly a scholarship organization. Hopefully over time that shifts into and builds another side, uh, which is the actual research initiatives supporting the doctors to come together with an alumni network um, and create that mentorship. Uh, and we'll see how this funding goes um, over time. But yeah, this is where the money is going in the organization. Any questions or thoughts about this? So in general, again, we're, we're on like the 20,000 a year sort of scale, right? Um, so we're not a million dollar organization, we're like a $20,000 organization. Um, and I think we're doing pretty well um, in accomplishing quite a bit for um, that scale, which I'm pretty proud of. So hi, for those of you that don't, that don't know me, my name is Mikey and I'm the Director of Nurses for Nurses. Uh, I've been with Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses for two years now, so January 2018. Um, and I help with the functions of uh, Nurses for Nurses, uh, their projects, events, and the functions of the two. Um, so just looking back on 2019, I could say it was a pretty big year for myself and for NFN as a whole. Um, to start off the year, I do, I do want to note that we did have some dedicated good volunteers come on board to join the team, um, notably Lindy, Kathy, and Ash, um, who are also nurses um, here in Canada, and um, you know, we helped brainstorm and work together to, to do some Nurses for Nurses events, um, and just some major discussions with regards to what um, you know, NFN would work on ongoing. Uh, in February 2019, I was, had the opportunity to go down uh, to Nicaragua with Andrew, um, where I was able to meet uh, our medical students, uh, some of our local uh, partners there, and I was able to spend some time uh, in the uh, public health clinic in Managua, where I worked alongside the nurses and um, I asked them a lot of questions, got to understand their healthcare system, um, see how they work, and kind of identify some of the gaps um, that, they, that they were um, experiencing as nurses and kind of just within the healthcare system. Um, it was a really great experience, uh, and so I took that information back and discussed it with my team, and we, uh, you know, brainstormed and kind of still were searching for ways that Nurses for Nurses would be able to work with Nicaraguan nurses and kind of help capacity build and um, improve the healthcare system um, in Nicaragua. Um, let's see, and then in June 2019, uh, Nurses for Nurses held our first uh, fundraising event, which was uh, Yoga in the Park, um, where we had a one-hour yoga session alongside with some auction prizes and uh, it was a great turnout on a nice warm June day. Um, we were able to raise over a thousand dollars that will be used towards uh, nurses for nurses um, future projects. Um, and yeah, so late, and then later on in the year uh, it was then decided that uh, Nurses for Nurses was going to take on sponsoring our first nursing student which is very exciting. Um, so the ending couple months that's kind of what we've been working with our Nicaraguan uh, director, uh, executive director Denise has been helping out with a lot of work, um, partnering with UNAN and kind of figuring out how that program will roll out. Um, so looking forward to this year. Uh, we're gonna we're looking forward to uh, doing a lot of fundraising to ensure that we'll be able to take on sponsoring our nurse. Um, we're looking forward to putting out some advertising and getting the application process and interviewing. And so hopefully by mid to end mid to late this 2020, uh, we'll be able to have our first nursing student uh, on board. Okay. Hey, um, my, my name is Eric. Um, I'm from Managua, Nicaragua. Um, I came here for an emergency. Um, actually, I'm a refugee. Um, I was uh, an student in activities. I defended human rights and uh, I demanded democracy and freedom in my country. Um, I'm a opposite, obviously, uh, for the Nicaraguan government. Um, I started a uh, volunteer for Doctors for Doctors the last year after meeting uh, with Andrew. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'd like to, to help people, uh, poor people, young people, students like me, because I know the necessities in, in my country. And I think that 
this organization is a great opportunity for students um, in Nicaragua. I've worked with Denise uh, establishing activities re and relations between Canada and Nicaragua for new programs, uh, nurses, nurses program, um, innovations or news, um, yeah, new programs, yeah.